Hello, how are you? And welcome to Kickstart. In this video, we're gonna be going through some handy dandy microvellum tools to create 2D drawings from our 3D products. I will be your guide along the way, and who am I, you ask? Well, I'm Ludwig from Microvellum, and we're gonna kickstart this video. All right, and here we are back in our kickstart kitchen, ready to get this marvelous 3D drawing into 2D. Just to make it easier for us to put things onto a shop drawing, dimension, annotate, make things a bit clearer for whoever's gonna be reading it. Now, the main set of tools we're gonna to be using is gonna be hiding under our draw and our 2D drawings tab within our main draw tab. And these are the main tools we're gonna to be using to turn this into 2D. So first to make things a bit easier, I'm gonna turn this to a top view. So I'm just gonna go over to the view cube. I turn them around this way. There we go, and here we are in a nice top view. Now, since I've placed most of my cabinets onto a wall, it's actually gonna be very simple. In, in fact, it's gonna be a click of a button to get my 2D drawings onto the screen. All I have to do now is within my 2D drawings tab, click on draw 2D wall elevation. From here, all I need to do is select the wall that I'd like to draw my front elevation from. So I'm gonna start with this guy over here and enter. Now I'm gonna get a pop-up that asks me, well, I've got a few cabinets on this wall, do you wanna show them all off? Or do you want to show the wall? What exactly are you doing here? In this case, I wanna select all, because I want all the cabinets that's on my wall right over here to be displayed in all their glory. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit OK. And now it's gonna ask me to place a point on the screen where I'd like my 2D elevation to pop up. So I'm just gonna go somewhere about yay word, right over here, and give it a left click. And there it is, my 2D drawing. Now this has taken all its information from what I've drawn in 3D onto 2D. And it's also been kind enough to actually give me a few dimensions and odd numbers to work with, with a little bit of annotation to go with it. Now, since this is linked to my 3D product, if I adjust a 3D product, it will adjust my 2D elevation as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to my modify tab and I'm gonna go over to my modify products and to my product prompts. I'm just gonna select a cabinet just to quickly shift a bit in width. So I'm gonna to go to my cabinet just over here. I can see it's my one door base. So I'm just gonna quickly increase this to say, oh, I don't know, 550. An extra 100 mil, something to show off that yes, he is now in fact bigger. So I can see my 3D cabinet has adjusted in width. Now if I zoom out and scooch over, to my 2D, I can see the same thing has happened. There's that 550 that I added into my cabinet width. Now, if I just go back to this guy over here, I kind of want to go back to 450. So I'm just gonna go back to my product prompts, click back on my cabinet, and switch him back to 450. There he is there, back to 450, and the world is as it should be. Now, I can also do the same thing for return wall elevation. So I'm gonna do this elevation over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing that I did before for my first wall elevation. So I'm gonna go back to my draw, back to my 2D drawings sub tab, and again, go to draw 2D wall elevation. Once again, I'm gonna click back on my wall that I wanna do a elevation of, hit enter, and once again, it's gonna ask me, well, I've got a couple of cabinets on this wall, what do you wanna do? And select all and okay. So next it's gonna ask me, well, what do you wanna put this one? And it's gonna put in about here, word, something somewhere a bit away from our main guy over here. So now I've got that 2D wall elevation as well, working very similar, if not the same, to my previous wall. Now I've got this cabinet right over here, out in space, and I kinda of wanna add him to this wall over here. Now by doing that, I would also like to add him to my 2D drawing over here as well. So first things first, I need to move that cabinet to that point in the wall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go straight to a 3D view. I'm gonna use my view cube over here to do just that. And I'm gonna use my microphone commands to move this guy 
over to this wall over here. So first I'm gonna rotate them, and I'm gonna do that just by going to the Modify, to the Modify Products tab, and there's a nice happy rotate button over here that I'm gonna use. Click on him, click on the camera I'd like to rotate, and just type in the angle that I'm gonna rotate him in, in this case, a big solid 90. So now he's rotated the right way, so therefore, I'm gonna now move on to the Move command over here, click on the camera I would like to move, I'm gonna choose this guy over here, hit enter, so I need to specify now a base point. And the base point is pretty much a point in the cabinet that you're gonna be moving from. So I'm gonna click onto this corner right over here. So that's gonna ask me, well, I need a second point of... So that's gonna ask me, well, I need a second point of placement. And this is pretty much saying, well, the point that you just clicked on, that base point, where is he gonna to move to? So I'm gonna move my mouse over to the wall corner over here, and I can see here that there's a green symbol pop up in a bit of an L or right angle shape. This is the perpendicular snap point. And this pretty much tells me that this point here is in line with the point that I selected before, i.e. the base point. So if I click over here, my cabinet has now moved pretty much in line with where he was before. You can see he's not lower than the wall, he's not higher than the previous point. So now I need to get this wall over here to update. So let me go back to a top view like so, and the first thing I need to do is because I drew this cabinet out over here and I moved into the wall, I need to go over to my modify, to my modify room components, and I need to select this button over here, associate wall products to wall. Now when I click on this, it's gonna ask me, well, which, uh, which wall do you wanna associate this cabinet to? Since I put this cabinet onto this wall over here, I wanna select this guy over here. Hit enter, and now it's gonna ask me, well, what cabinets have you just added to this wall? And I'll select this one over here. You need to do this because we're obviously doing a 2D wall elevation and the wall needs to know what cabinets are now associated to it. This is why we're clicking this button over here. So now that I've done that, I just now need to redraw this 2D wall over here. To do that, we're gonna go over to our draw, back into, you guessed it, 2D drawings, but this time we're gonna go to redraw 2D walls. Click on him. Click on the 2D wall that we've drawn, hit enter, and now you can see that wall redraw with a nice happy little addition to that wall. And there's my happy little 2D base cabinet. Now again, this guy is dynamic, so if I move this cabinet over here, a bit further up along this wall, so I'm just going to go over to my modify, modify products, and to my move, click on the cabinet I'd like to move, hit enter. Specify base points, since I'm moving in my set distance, I'm just gonna click over here, move my mouse in the direction I need to move it, I'm just gonna type in, oh, I don't know, let's say 200. So there he is moving in my 2D view, as well as my 3D view on the screen. Things are looking good so far. Now, there's some other tools that we can use in our 2D drawing tools. We go back to our draw. We also have, below our draw 2D wall elevations, draw 2D wall plan view. So if I click on this, click again on the wall that I'd like to do a 2D elevation of, hit enter. This time pick a point to place my plan view. And there is now my 2D wall elevation as well that I can use my shop drawings if need be. Now, below my 2D redraw walls, I've also got draw 2D products. And this is where you want to draw a product that's not necessarily associated to that wall. So if you just want to have just a standalone product as an elevation, click on him. Click on the cabinet I would like to draw in 2D. Hit enter and pick a point that I'd like to draw that 2D cabinet. And there he is right over here. Now, there's another one I can use called draw product sections. Now, before I use this guy over here, I'm just gonna draw just a 2D line across where I'd like to do a section of. Say, for example, I wanna do a section right along this part over here. So, I'm just gonna go over to my draw tab over here. I'm just gonna draw just a straight line straight through the guts of this fellow over here. Just a nice straight line and enter. Next, I'm gonna to go to that draw product sections and I'm gonna select the wall that these cabinets are associated to. Now it's gonna ask me, well, 
what kind of section do you want to do? Do you want to do a plan section, a cross section? What are you thinking? Well, I'm going to stick with a nice happy cross section and now it's going to ask me to pick a cutting plane. Now, when I click on this, I can now click on that line that I drew and that can be the cutting plane. That can be where my section is going through. So I'll click on this line here. Now it's going to ask me, well, place a point to your section. So I'm running out a bit of space. I'm going to plop them over here. There's my wall. There's my base cabinet. And there is my overhead with dimensions, with a little bit of annotation to go with it as well. Now, again, you don't necessarily need a wall for this. You can just do this onto a product, even something that's an open space. Once again, if I go to draw product sections, I want to do one of this fellow over here. And this time I'm going to do a plan elevation. Now, instead of drawing a cutting plane, you can also type in, well, where you want the section to go along your cabinets. In this case, since I'm doing a plan section, it's asking how high off the ground do you want to do a section of. If I was doing cross section, you can see well how far along the width of your cabinet you would like to do a section of. You can even ask which face you would like to draw your section of as well. But I'm going to stick with a plan elevation. Go ahead, OK. I'm just going to place them right over here. Now you can see that's not showing off too much because obviously there's not too much to show off. Now, since this is a 2D elevation, I can highlight over this and just simply erase over here. You can also draw a hatch return to sort of act as a bit of a placeholder as well. Now, if we go over to draw hatch return, click on this file over here, it's gonna ask you what kind of cabinet you'd like to draw as a hatch section. You can choose between base, tall, upper cabinet, anything in that list. You can specify the height, the toe kick, different parameters of that cabinet that you're drawing as well. You just need to specify which side we're looking from and you can draw a section. From there, click on a place on your screen and it draws you a nice happy 2D section with a nice little hatch attached to it. Now, finally, within our 2D drawings, we have this fellow over here, draw dynamic product image. So if I click on this fellow over here, I can draw a 2D dynamic section, well, sections to be honest, of a cabinet. So I'm gonna select a happy little guinea pig over here, Mr. Two Door Base. I'm gonna click on him and hit enter. You can select multiple cabinets at once, but for now, I'm gonna stick with Mr. Two Door. I'm gonna select a point where I like to draw my 2D dynamic image, just over here, will do me fine. And as you can see, it's now drawn me a few sections for my 2D cabinet. I've got a front elevation, a plan view, a side section, and a nice handsome looking exploded view. Now this guy, as the name implies, is dynamic. So if I go into my cabinet over here, I'm just gonna go over to my modify, to my modify products and to my product prompts. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna adjust the size of the cabinet, rather I wanna go over to my internal options and I'm going to change how many shelves I have. I'm just gonna add maybe, let's go crazy, let's go three. Three adjustable shelves, hit okay. My 3D cabinet is going to adjust to suit. And if we have a look below, you can now see that my dynamic product image has also adjusted with him. Heck, if we go back to this fellow over here, we can see he's also adjusted as well. Now you do have some control over how your 2D and your dynamic product image appears. Now a lot of this is controlled within the product itself. In fact, if we go to product prompts and click on our cabinet, there's a few tick boxes that we can use to adjust how our 2D image appears. And those two guys are right over here on the right hand side, show flat shot options and show 2D drawing options. We're gonna start with the flat shot options over here. And once I click on him, a flat shot options tab has appeared at the top. And this guy over here controls what pops up when we click on that draw dynamic product image. So we can see on the right hand side, we have a few tick boxes asking us, well, what do you want to include into your drawing? So for one, I can say, well, I don't want that part list that appears when I draw that exploded view. So I'm going to say no to the flat shot part list. I'm going to hit okay. And we can see now in our dynamic product image, there's no more part list. 
In fact, we can even access our product prompts by clicking on our draw dynamic product image as well. So taking it straight back to my cabinet, back to my flat shot options, and you can adjust a few more things in here. I could say, well, I don't want a plan view. Thank you very much. So I'm gonna give that untick. And no more plan view in my dynamic product image. Something very similar can be said to when I select show 2D drawing options. As you can see, once again, there's now a visible 2D drawing options tab. And in here, I can add a few more things, a few more dimensions, sorry, to my cabinet. I can even display a product description as well. So if I untick, say, display product description, hit OK. Now, if we shift our attention over to our cabinet over here, no product description as well in our 2D drawings. Now that we've got all this onto our screen, we now need to put this onto our shop drawing layout. We need to put this onto a piece of paper so we can save as a PDF or print it out for anyone that requires our shop drawings. So we're gonna circle our attention down to these guys over here. And these guys are our drawing layout pages. If I click on say A301, there's my layout page over here. Now you can see there's nothing going on over here, but if I go over to A302, we can see that there's a nice CN border around my paper. And you can see there's a little window that's going into my model space. Now this CN square is what we call a viewport. And a viewport is essentially a window into our model space that allows us to capture what we have in our model space and put it onto our piece of paper. Now at the moment, I can't control anything in my viewport over here. And that's because I'm currently in paper space. How do I know? If I look down below here, I can see paper is selected. If I click on paper, it now switches it to model. And if I try zooming in and out, I am now zooming in and out of my viewport. I can click on my wheel, pan around, and I can adjust what I see on my piece of paper. So for example, I wanna start with this guy over here. So I'm gonna zoom in nice and tight right over there. Now the reason why I'm putting him a bit to the left is I can actually grow and shrink my viewport. Now, since I'm finished adjusting my model space, I'm gonna click back into model. So now if I zoom in and out, I'm not zooming in and out of my model space. But now I can click on my scene border and you can see there's some vertexes that appear around the border of my square. If I click on them, I can drag them in to grow and shrink my viewport. Now I can also copy and paste. So if I click on my viewport, and if I go over to my copy button right over here, I can click on a point I would like to copy from, being this point, say where this copy is going, say about here. And there is now another viewport to use. So now I can go back to model space. And first off, when we have multiple viewports, you need to click on the one that you would like to adjust first, like so. So I'm gonna go over and this time I'm going to do a 2D section over here. So I'm gonna get him over here, gonna go back to model, well, go back to my model button that is, and go back to paper space, click back on my viewport. I'm gonna shrink this fellow over here as well. Once again, I'm gonna give him a nice happy copy and copy this fellow over here. Once again, I'm gonna hit enter going to go back to my model space, click on this viewport here, and this time I'm going to go and zoom into my dynamic product image over here. Nope, bit too small my viewport, I'm just going to quickly just shift him across, just a smidge, there we go, back to paper, and zoom into this fellow over here. Now, I'm going to go back to my paper space, and yeah, I don't really actually need these guys over here. So once again, I'm going to go back to model space by clicking on this corner tab over here. And I'm just going to go to my product prompts, click on my 3D cabinet. Once again, go to my flat shot tokens, and I'm going to turn off a elevation view. I'm going to turn off a section view, just leaving my ISO view over here. 
And there is just my isometric view. I'm gonna go back to my A302. Oop, it's gonna go back to model. And I'm just gonna shift this down. Now I'm gonna go back to paper. Now I can see that there's a bit of text going on in my dynamic product image. Not to worry, if I go back to model space, I can just simply click on that text and I can either move it by clicking on this vertex over here or I can delete it either way. Any change that you make in your model space affects what you have in your paper space if you're using a viewport. As you can see, back in A302, now that's looking nice and handsome. I'm gonna give him a nice happy save just up the top left corner over here because I'm proud of my work and I wanna save it for the rest of the world to see. Now from here you're probably thinking, well what about more dimensions? What about text? What about leaders? What about more annotation? I wanna add a bit more you know, information on my paper space. Well, not to worry, because anything that you do in model space will carry over into your paper, including dimensions. So if we go back to our model, if we go over to this tab up the top over here, we've got the annotate tab. And the annotate tab has all your annotation goodness, from dimensions to text to leaders to tables, anything that you want to add more information to your drawing. So if I go over to this fellow over here, whoop, I would like to add maybe just a dimension over here. I can go over to my dimension button over here, click on a couple points, say from here to here. And there's my dimension. And once again, A302, there he is over there being nice and handsome. Gonna give that another save. And I think I'm happy with where I am. And that is our 2D drawings tools. Hopefully you find this useful when you're completing and submitting your shop drawings out to customers, installers, or just to show off to your friends and family. As usual, thank you so much for watching. And as usual, I'm Ludwig from Mark Bohm. Take care and have a wonderful day.